Dear ladies and gentlemen, in today's video trial we will analyze a data from season 2009 which owns one of the best war rider, Mr. Ivan Basso. All we know that Ivan Basso had two main goals in the season. Achieve the best result at the Giro d'Italia in the first part of the season and after that prepare very well on a road world championship in Mendrisio. We know that Ivan Basso achieved a very nice third position in general classification at the Giro and we also know that he didn't achieve a good racing result at world championship. Not only a racing result, but he also didn't be able to produce his very good power and keep the same pace with the best competitors. Of course, that causes can be more. Mostly it's about some combinations, but on base of his training data, we can compare both preparation periods from performance level view. It means preparation period before the Giro d'Italia and preparation period before World Championship in Mendrisio. If we do this comparison, we can exactly answer on question why he didn't achieve very similar racing result such as at the Giro d'Italia. He didn't achieve good result at World Championship because he had a lower performance level before World Championship in comparison with preparation period for the Giro. We can say this statement on base of this first unique analysis. This is heart rate power analysis. We can see two curves. Black curve, which was calculated from his training files from preparation period before the Giro. Of course, represents a higher performance level in comparison with a red curve which was calculated from his training files from preparation period before World Championship. Higher performance level means that he did produce a higher power output on the same heart rate values. We could also note a higher power differences on a higher heart rate intensity. It can be caused by a cause that he was more tired in the second part of the season, his body and energetic systems such as lipid energetic system worked with lower efficiency and of course if we want to produce a higher power our body has to receive more oxygen, burn more energy and we will have a higher heart rate. It means in this case that the red curve will achieve lower power on these heart rate values. And now the software will calculate power differences between both curves, black curve and red curve, on each heart rate values which are displayed on x-axis. We can analyze that final average weighted difference between both curves was 24 watts. It means that he produced about 24 watts on average less power on each heart rate values in comparison with preparation period before the Giro d'Italia. Of course, if we speak about work class, difference 24 watts in performance level is big gap. If black zero level represents preparation period before the Giro d'Italia, where he celebrated third place in general classification, 24 watts drop down means a red curve that with higher probability will not succeed at World Championship 
because work class is very balanced. If Ivan Basso produces power about 24 watts less on each heart rate values on average, there exists big chance that his competitors will be stronger and he will not achieve some nice racing result at World Championship. And now let's see on Y axis where is displayed absolute power. Of course, if we want to analyze performance level behavior, next very important parameter is rider's body weight, not only a relationship between heart rate and power. Of course, that we don't know Ivan Basso's body weight behavior in season 2009, but with higher probability we can assume that there were not dramatic changes. If we ask ourselves how many kilograms of his body weight would have to lose in preparation period for the World Championship to reach the same performance level as before the Giro d'Italia in terms of relative performance on one kilogram, the answer will be 7 kilograms. If we assume that he had 70 kilograms in preparation period before the Giro, he would have to reduce his body weight on only 63 kilograms, reach to the same relative performance as in preparation for the Giro. Of course, 7 kilograms of body weight is big difference and question is if he really reduced his weight about 7 kilograms, if there would be decrease in his performance from absolute view and relative recalculated on 1 kilogram of his body weight. If we set both parameters, if we set both body weight parameters or values into the software, which will recalculate both preparation periods, black curve before zero and a red curve before World Championship, we will get following graph. Now, relative power per 1 kg of body weight has been already displayed on Y axis. Power in watts per 1 kg. We can see that both curves are very similar. This result was achieved by body weight reduction about 7 kg, but we don't assume that it was. Here is answer that both curves represents very similar performance level, because the final difference between both curves is only 0 0.04 watts per 1 kilogram of his body weight. If we back to the reality, this is Ivan Basso's reality. And if we back to the reality, we have already known the main cause of his failure at World Championship 2009. Ivan Basso had lower performance level about 24 watts in comparison with preparation period before the Giro d'Italia. Now, when we have already known where the problem was, we can focus on more detailed examination of why this larger drop down in performance level occurred. We will analyze Ivan Basso's training data in the next unique analysis. This is physical work over extension model where we can 
analyze behavior of his training impulses. Training impulse is represented by black curve. This black curve and its physical work or we can say training load for each training unit calculated such as normalized power multiplied by riding time and answer on these training impulses is overextension work here calculated such as final fatigue index multiplied by riding time of course that both parameters are in the same unit what our unit and now what we are able to analyze from his season 2009 behavior first of all we will focus on whole preparation period before the Giro d'Italia we will focus on this time period if we focus on training load trend we can see that Ivan Basso started to train at relative high level here and he was not able to increase training load much more in following course and the main question is why it happened answer is very clear in the first part of his preparation period this training load caused in most of training units big body overextension here which causes of course fatigue if we train much more if we work more physical work than our current working capacity we will be more and more tired it means that accumulation tire level will take higher and higher effect certainly not the positive adaptation of our organism on a higher and higher training load if he started to train on lower training load level he wouldn't achieve this larger body over extension or larger over overload his body would have more time on positive adaptation process and in upcoming weeks and months would train much more and achieve higher working capacity in the final part of his preparation period before the Giro and now he will clean the black curve from over extension work and after that we will get a new curve this is working capacity curve which is calculated such as physical work minus over extension work the red curve stayed the same again over extension work and now we can exactly see that his working capacity behavior is very flat any positive dramatically changing in this preparation period it means that there was a positive adaptation on gradual increase of training load behavior how we know here in the first part in the first part of preparation period he trained too much he was more tired and his working capacity stagnate his working capacity behavior is very flat because he was not able to increase training load and hold over extension work on lower level of course that Ivan Basso had a big capacity from previous whole career it couldn't play negative essential role for racing result at the Giro but how we have already known in the second in the second part in preparation period before world championship he had a lower performance level about 24 watts and it was given for that reason that he trained much more 
than his optimum for this time period, for this preparation period. He collected a larger cumulative body over extension level. Of course, very difficult stage race such as Giro in May. And working capacity missed for preparation period before World Championship for achieving very similar performance level. We can say that working capacity level for particular season has been already set from previous seasons. If we consume a significant portion in the first part of a season, for the second part we will have less capacity which would be needed for keeping good performance level. And it was also Ivan Basso's case in season 2009. And now let's focus on second preparation period. Preparation period for World Championship in Mendrisio. We can exactly see a much more better positive growing trend of his working capacity, which is on a higher level than most of values in the first preparation period. And it was caused the fact that there was positive adaptation process on training impulses. But it was too late from view of his World Championship in Mendrisio. If we make final conclusion, we can say that his capacity assumption for World Championship was on very good level. Any problem achieved a nice racing result, such as at the Giro, but problem was in his lower performance level, which was caused by higher overextension work, which had cumulative effects. Now we can retrace previous parts of this video trailer. We know that Ivan Basso didn't have a success at the World Championship in Mendrisio. He didn't have a success because he had a lower performance level about 24 watts on average. Furthermore, we know that his lower performance level was caused by inadequate training load during the first months of the season 2009, where there was a significant accumulation overextension load. This means that he had enough working capacity to keep a very comparable performance level in the second part of his season 2009. Of course, we can start to analyze a structure of each training unit in more detail to determine how was achieved this big overextension work in most of training units. And if we do so, the various training units can be divided into several groups. And now we will introduce the different types of his training units. We can exactly suppose on base of this analysis that most types of training units will be characterized by the fact that there occurred a significant overextension load. Let's see on a first example. This is training unit from the 30th of January 2009, which represents first group of training units very precise. This first type is characterized by first shorter warm-up here on lower heart rate intensity such as recovery or basic endurance training zone. And after that training unit is mainly focused on practicing more intervals, mostly in his steady state area. 
after final interval Ivan Basso continues on lower heart rate intensity next two or three hours on average where is collected big overextension work with cumulation tire effect and creating big fatigue level in this case the final fatigue index is 26 watts and he collected overextension work on a level about 50 watt hours of physical work this first type of training units is applied by Ivan Basso very often here we can see big overextension work because yellow curve yellow fatigue curve is most of time under zero fatigue level it means that on these heart rate values he produced lower power in comparison with previous parts of this training unit in comparison with the same heart rate intensity and now let's focus on second group of Ivan Basso's training units we can display another training unit which will represent our second group this is training unit from the 10th of January 2009 which is relatively similar with previous graph with previous first group but there is one significant difference Ivan Basso applies very long warm up before first interval focus once again on steady state area in this case warm up has length about three hours without any body over extension because yellow fatigue curve is going most of time above zero fatigue level after final interval he wrote next one and a half hour where he collected incredible final fatigue index on level minus 44 watts it's big body over extension of course and now we will introduce third group of his training units which are very similar with first group but once again with one significant different and this different we can describe on next training unit from the 27th of December 2008 if we focus on final part of this training unit we don't see any dramatically accumulation tire effect in the final part of this training unit it means that Ivan Basso had enough working capacity for this day and training unit of course that we don't know what was the main goal for this training unit from over extension view but on base of this unique analysis we can exactly know if he collected over extension work or not if the main goal was to overload his organism we know that the main goal was not realized but if the main goal was to apply at intervals in a steady state area and not achieve higher overextension work in the final part of the training unit this training unit was successfully completed we can see on another training unit from the 1st of May 2009 this is training unit from the 1st of May 2009 and we are still speaking about third group of his training units we can see very similar behavior for the final part of this training unit in this case only 14 watts of body over extension 
for the final part. And now we will describe fourth group. Let's see on next example from the 12th of October 2009. We can see still long or longer warm up, in this case a boat. Two hours and intervals focusing on very high intensity. But we can see much more shorter cold down interval. In this case only about 50 minutes. But these intervals maybe were very difficult for Ivan Basso because he collected in this part incredible minus 52 watts of fatigue index. Of course that among Ivan Basso's training units include also training units focusing on classical basic endurance it means lipid energetic system but I have to admit that this type of training units is not represented very often from whole perspective of his all training units. We can display it first example. This is training unit from the 24th of January 2009. We can see shorter training unit about three and a half hours. Sometimes a higher heart rate intensity. And we can exactly analyze on base of fatigue curve behavior that his working capacity for this day and training unit was on very good level because he completed without any dramatically higher final fatigue index. It was only minus 13 watts and most of time yellow fatigue curve oscillates around zero fatigue level. Or we can show on another training unit from the 16th of January 2009. This is training unit with riding time about 5 hours. But in this case, he collected in the final part bigger overextension work because on the final 50 minutes he achieved minus 31 watts of fatigue index. And the main question is if this body overextension was planned in his training plan or not. If yes, Ivan Basso correctly performed this training unit. But if it was written in the training plan to write for 5 hours in basic endurance training zone and perform this training unit without any higher body overextension, he didn't correctly complete it. Of course that we don't know what was written in his training plan and what was planned. But we exactly know that there was higher body overextension. We can also focus on his training units in August 2009 where we know that he had very good working capacity and there was more positive adaptation process on training load. For example, training unit from the 1st of August 2009. We can see very similar riding time, about once again about 5 hours, but he had sufficient working capacity for completing this training unit without any body overextension in the final one hour. 
because in the final one hour of this training unit yellow fatigue curve still oscillates around zero fatigue level and fatigue index for this part is plus 7 watts or we can display training unit from next training unit the 4th of August 2009 the final fatigue index was a little bit higher 20 minus 20 watts but I would say that he didn't collect higher overextension because most of time yellow fatigue curve oscillates around zero fatigue level we can see on one of the final type of Ivan Basso's training units in this case training unit from the 23rd of January 2009 once again classical basic endurance ride but we can see very high intensity in the final part of this training unit in the final part occurs the maximum load generated by the maximum heart rate intensity up to VO2 training zone we can say that it's about super compensation for exhausting all energetic supplies it's accepted that there will be a significant increase in energy substrates in the upcoming days and now let's see on the final group of his training units we can see on a representative example training unit from the 1st of February 2009 here Ivan Basso entered into this training unit from higher fatigue level which was created by more difficult previous training or racing units we know it because during first part he produced lower power with comparison the remaining part of the unit and of course it was compared with the same and very similar heart rate values we can see that yellow fatigue curve is going under zero fatigue level if we mark first 20 minutes average fatigue index is big minus 31 watts it means that on these heart rate values he produce about 31 watts less power output in comparison with next part of this training unit and it was also compared with the same heart rate values and now we are coming to the end of our video analysis about training data of Ivan Basso from his season 2009 in addition we have already analyzed Ivan Basso's season 2009 we have also analyzed causes and context of why of why he failed on world championship one quite clear association should be seen from the video trailer and the relationship among working capacity training load and overextension work and performance level and basic idea is as follows as we said for every season our working capacity has been already set on the basis of previous years it means that the training load is given which can be produced in a given year with which we can manage 
if we consume most of working capacity in the first part of our season, cumulation tire level will take effect and that higher body overextension will cause decrease in performance level for second part of our season. If we use this idea for current season 2012, we can observe the following context. If we focus on Chris Froome from Team Sky and his Vuelta España, of course we can watch in television, Chris Froome lost his working capacity for the final part of this stage race. There was a higher and higher fatigue level with cumulation effect and the final result was that he lost podium ceremony in general classification. Of course, main cause is very clear. Tired from Tour de France 2012 and from previous parts of the season and thus insufficient working capacity for Vuelta España. There is nothing wrong. It's a reality. It is very difficult to hard working for team leader at the Tour de France and in next few weeks to celebrate podium ceremony top three at Vuelta España. So from this perspective, no problem. But I would positively see a different problem. Problem at the Giro 2012 for Ivan Basso and Michel Scarponi and the Tour de France 2012 for Kedel Evans. All three riders had the race such as a top main priority, but all three riders had the same race behavior such as Chris Froome at the Vuelta. Unsuccessful result. It means that in the final few stages, which were very difficult, they lost working capacity, accumulation fatigue level took effect, performance level dropped down, and final racing result was the lost podium ceremony in the overall classification. Of course, that there was different cause that than by Chris Froome, because all three riders had the Giro or the Tour such as main and only one top priority. Of course, as we have already said, that cause is not just one, it's usually about some combination of several contexts but I would see one main context for all three riders. It's the same personal coach for all three riders. All three riders have the same new personal coach. And now a final part of this video trailer. We also know that Ivan Basso did win the Giro d'Italia 2010. The main question is, what was different between the Giro 2009 and 10? Ivan Basso also published a few of his training files from the season 2010, mainly from January up to March. It means that we are able to compare both preparation periods with relative good accuracy. We can see that Ivan Basso had lower performance level in season 2010, but it couldn't play an essential role. We would need all his training files to get very accuracy output and we can see the biggest power differences at lower heart rate intensity. This is mostly due to on a higher fatigue level when we are much more tired. It means that we have lower resting heart rate and on lower heart rate intensity we will produce higher power output. And we know that Ivan Basso produced 
a lot of overextension work in preparation period for the Giro 2009. From 115 heart rate beats, we can see that both curves are much more similar. And main question is, how was he tired in the preparation for the Giro 2010? It means that we should focus now on his working capacity and overextension work at the beginning of the season 2010. This is once again working capacity overextension model. We can exactly analyze that he did win the Giro 2010 because he had mainly higher working capacity. Most of training units where he really trained in the season 2010 represents positively higher working capacity in comparison to the same time period in the previous season 2009. And how we can see during these first weeks in preparation on the Giro 2010, he was positively more relaxed because he achieved lower overextension work and fatigue level. It means that his training load behavior, which was written and planned in his training plan, was set much more precise and accuracy. It doesn't mean when we train more, we will be more and more stronger. It may happen that we will be only more tired. We can show on a few training units from the season 2010 where he did have really higher working capacity in comparison to previous season 2009. Here most of points are on level about 700, 800 and sometimes about 1000 physical work of his working capacity parameter. But at the beginning of season 2010, most of points where he really trained are really on a higher level. Mostly about 1000 watt hours of his working capacity. Now we can show first example from 18th of January 2010. You can see riding time about 4 hours. It is standard Ivan Basso's riding time. You can see once again a shorter warm up, a lot of intervals in higher and higher intensity. And if we focus on final on a one and a half hour, we can see that he collected only fatigue index only minus 17 watts. It means that he had higher working capacity and he was less tired after practicing these intervals. Or we can see on second example from the 31st of January 2010, you can see that final fatigue index is around zero level. It means that yellow fatigue curves still oscillating around zero fatigue level. And this physical work which was produced during this training unit represents his working capacity for this day and this training unit. It's perfect working capacity. We can display training unit from the 8th of February 2010. Once again you can see that most of time of this training unit 
he didn't collect it any overextension work and overextension load only in final 30 minutes minus 65 watts you can display next training unit once again perfect working capacity training unit about 5 hours and the final fatigue index only minus 14 watts it's perfect working capacity and much more better in comparison to previous season 2009 this is training unit from the 13th of february 2010 and once again we can see perfect working capacity training unit about four hours and the final fatigue index only three watts minus three watts it's perfect working capacity we don't see any fatigue training unit from the 17th of february and the final fatigue index only minus 13 watts the 21st of february riding time five and a half hours physical work is higher than 1100 watt hours and fatigue index is zero watts it means that his working capacity for this day and training unit is absolutely enough for producing this physical work of course it's perfect working capacity for Ivan Basso training unit from the 24th of February you can see very similar training unit in comparison with training units in the season 2009 very short warm up few intervals and here in the final two and a half hours he collected only minus 10 watts if we speak about the final fatigue index it's perfect value and it means that Ivan Basso still had perfect working capacity and now final conclusion on base of his higher working capacity level from the preparation period 2010 during the Giro 2010 he was gradually stronger and stronger because he had sufficient working capacity and cumulation tire level didn't take effect in the final part of the Giro 2010 and the final result was that Ivan Basso celebrated a victory at the Giro 2010